Sideways Stories from Wayside School, Chapter 7, Calvin. Calvin had a big round face. Calvin, said Mrs. Jules, I want you to take this note to Mrs. Zarves for me. Mrs. Zarves, asked Calvin. Yes, Mrs. Zarves. You know where she is, don't you? Yes, she's on the 19th story. That's right, Calvin. Take it to her. Calvin didn't move. Well, what are you waiting for? She's on the 19th story. Yes, we have already established that fact. The 19th story. Yes, Calvin, the 19th story. Now take it to her before I lose my patience. But Mrs. Jules, now Calvin, unless you would rather go home on the kindergarten bus. Yes, ma'am, said Calvin. He slowly walked out the door. Ha, 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 take it to the 19th story, laughed Terence. Give it to Mrs. Arves, hooted My Myron. Have fun on the 19th story, called Jason. Calvin stood outside the door to the classroom. He didn't know what to, do, what to do or where to go. Now, as you know, when the builder built Wayside School, he accidentally built it sideways. But he also forget, forgot to build the 19th story. He built the 18th and the 20th, but no 19th. He said he was very sorry. There was also no Miss Zarves. Miss Zarves taught the class on the 19th story. But since there was no 19th story, there was no Miss Zarves. And besides that, as if Calvin didn't have enough problems, there was no note. Mrs. Mrs. Jules had never given Calvin the note. Boy, this is just great. Just great. I'm supposed to take a note that I don't have to a, to a teacher who doesn't exist, who teaches on a story that was never built. He didn't know what to do. He walked down to the 18th story, then back up to the 20th, then back down to the 18th, then back up again to the 20th. There was no 19th story. There was never a 19th story, and there never will be a 19th story. Calvin walked down to the administration office. He decided to put the note in Mrs. Arv's mailbox, but there wasn't one of those either. That didn't bother Calvin too much, however, since he didn't have a note. He looked out the window and saw Lewis, the yard teacher, shooting basket. Lewis will know what to do, he thought. Calvin went outside. Hey, Lewis! Hi, Calvin, said Lewis. He tossed in the basketball. Calvin dribbled up and took a shot. He missed. Lewis tipped it in. Do you want to play a game? I don't have time, said Calvin. I have to deliver a note to Miss Zarves up on the 19th story. And what are you doing all the way down here? There is no 19th story. Then where's Miss Zarves? There is no Miss Zarves. What are you going to do with the note? There is no note. I understand. That's good, said Calvin, because I sure don't. It's simple, said Lewis. You're not supposed to take no notes to no teachers. You already haven't done it. Calvin didn't, still didn't understand. I'll just have to tell Miss Jules that I couldn't deliver the note, he said. That's good. The truth is always best. Besides, I don't think I understand what I said either. Calvin walked back up the 30 flights of stairs to Mrs. Jules's class. Thank you very much, Calvin. Calvin said, but I, Mrs. Jules interrupted him. That was a very important note, and I'm glad I was able to count on you. But you see, you delivered the note to Miss Zars on the 19th story. How'd you do it? What do you mean, how'd he do it? Asked Mrs. Mrs. Jules. He gave Miss Zars the note. Some people, Jason, are responsible. But you see, Mrs. Jules, the note was very important, said Mrs. Mrs. Jules, I told Ms. Zarves not to meet me for lunch. Don't worry, said Calvin. She won't. Good, said Ms. Jules. I have a coffee can full of Tootsie Roll Pops on my desk. You may help yourself to one for being such a good messenger. Thanks, said Calvin. But really, it was nothing. Chapter 8. Myron. Myron had big ears. He was elected class president. The children in Ms. Jules's class expected him to be a good president. Other presidents were good speakers. Myron was even better. He was a good listener. But he had a problem. He didn't know what a class president was supposed to do. So he asked, What am I supposed to do? It's a difficult job, said Mrs. Jules, but you can do it. Every You must turn the lights on every morning and turn them off at the end of the day. What? As a class president, you must learn to listen, said Mrs. Jules. I'll repeat myself only one more time. You must turn the lights off every morning. I heard you the first time, said Myron, but it just doesn't sound like very much of a job. 
It certainly is, said Mrs. Jules. Without light, I can't teach, and the children can't learn. Only you can give us that light. I think it is a very important job. I guess so, but he wasn't convinced. Here, let me show you how to work a light switch, said Mrs. Jules. I already know how, said Myron. I've been turning lights on and off my whole life. Very good. You'll make a fine president. Myron wanted to be the best president ever, but it was such an easy job, he thought, that anybody could do it. When the school let out that day, Myron stayed behind. He turned out the lights by flicking the switch down. Excellent! On his way home, Myron ho heard a horrible noise. First there was a loud screeching, and then a sharp squeal, and then a roaring engine, and then the very faint sound of a girl crying. Myron ran to see what happened. Dana was bent over in the middle of the road. What's the matter? My dog got hit by a car. I don't know who did it. I don't know. They sped away. Well, that's not important. We've got to try to save, save Pugsy. Pugsy lay in the middle of the street. Myron carefully, Myron carefully picked her up. He carried her two miles to the vet. Dana cried at his side. Don't worry, Dana. She'll be all right. But he wasn't really so sure. He gave Pugsy to the vet, walked Dana home, and then walked home himself. Dana was so upset she forgot to thank him. Myron didn't mind. He thought that's what being class president was all about. The next morning, before he went to school, Myron went to Dana's house. Pugsy was there. She seemed all right. Dana petted her. Pugsy licked her face. See, Myron, she's all right. The vet said you brought her just in time. Hi, Pugsy. He petted her. Pugsy bit his hand. I guess she doesn't know you. She was unconscious yesterday when you saved her life. Myron, Dana's mother put some medicine and a Band-Aid on Myron's hand, and then they drove the children. she drove the children to school. They were late. They ran up the stairs to Miss Jules's class. The room was completely dark. It's about time you got here, Myron, said Mrs. Jules. We have no lights. Why didn't someone else just turn them on, asked Myron. Because you're class president. Show Stephen how to work the lights. From now on, he will be class president. Myron showed Stephen how to turn on the lights. He flicked the switch up. At the end of the day, Myron showed Stephen how to turn the lights off. He flicked the switch down. After a week, Stephen finally caught on. He made a good president. The lights were on every morning. Myron, who was president for only a day, was the best president in the history of Wayside School. It was just that nobody knew it.